Yo, what is going on, GT fam? Welcome back to another video. I'm your host, Omega, and tonight we are going to be halfway reviewing these KZIMs. Uh, as you can probably tell by the name of this title, this is going to be more of a rant video than it is going to be a review. I can probably sum up this IEM in two words. Massive and confusion. Massive confusion. Yes. That, that's it. That, that's all you get. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so... Obviously, as most of you have seen, this is not a new IEM. It's fairly new, but it's been highly reviewed, but I may be the first one to take a controversial take or a review of it. These, to me, are not actually going to be on my review table, on my review board, etc. I don't rate these because I don't like them. These are an absolute fail for me. If I don't like something, I'm not going to rate it. Now, that being said, this IEM isn't entirely irredeemable. It's just that, personally, the method for redeeming these is not something that I wish to partake in. So... With all that stuff out of the way, let me explain how these came into existence. And we'll go from there, okay? Cool. So, as far as my background with KZ, not necessarily Critical, but KZ. KZ was the first company I bought IEMs from. Back when I was 15, 16 years old, uh, they released a model, and I don't even know what the hell the name of the model is anymore, but they released an IEM that was purple on the left side, red on the blue, red or like a really purplish blue on the right side. And that was my first IEM ever. Before then, I had jumped around from Skull Candies to Sony's to JBL's. And, you know, the JBL sounded the best, but I just, I always thought there was something more. And the ones from KZ helped me realize that there definitely is more to life and to sound and to audio gear than what the mainstream, you know, sort of consumer market, the audio, the audio consumer market gives you. After KZ rekindled, uh, or I should say first ignited the, the spirit for me to get into audio and audiophile gear. Uh, it's it's kind of just been a, a really weird but awesome and fantastic roller coaster ever since. Uh, yeah, without them, I wouldn't have the IEMs that I do today and I wouldn't enjoy my music or the audio equipment that I buy nearly as much as I do. Now, with that being said... The reason I sort of, I guess, mutually, at least for what I want to call it, parted ways with KZ and I no longer buy their products is because they kind of went stagnant on me. They have always been known for their light but well done presentation, their well executed presentation, and their astounding build quality. And these IMs are no different. However, and this was something that was echoed in the in, in the audio on in the audiophile community even way back then is their sound signature is very v-shaped and there's no there's no real um deviation from that to my knowledge this is probably the only deviation from that this set of ims right here that was tuned by grin now because of that like I said, I just I, I had never cared or bothered to look at IEMs ever since I last purchased the ZS6 in the metal trim. I actually bought both the metal trim and the plastic trim. I was one of the first people to buy the plastic ones. But yeah, uh, after that point, you know, they basically they were like more is better and it really wasn't because the tuning that I was getting from Advanced Sound Audio was just as good, and it was only with one driver. So, you know, bye-bye, KZ, and hello, everyone else. Anyways, not important right now, but it, it, it kind of sets us up for who's to blame, I think, in this scenario. 
However, it does not explain why these were still released and, you know, what, like, what people were thinking when they reviewed this. So let me jump into it and say this right now. These IMs are not for everyone. In fact, they're probably for a small portion of people. Let me say that again. These IMs are not for everyone. If you like EQing things and you don't have a problem with re-EQing these IMs to sound appropriate and to sound correct, then you, my friend, have absolutely no problem with these. You will be fine. Now, as for people like myself, I do not like to EQ anything. I'm a bit of an EQ purist in that sense. I refuse to EQ anything for more than three songs, and usually it's just a pump of the bass to absurdly stupid levels and to laugh like a 12-year-old child. That's literally it. And probably to uh, hear 66 Samus say sex in bass-boosted <laughs> frequencies. <laughs> that last part was, was more of a joke, but... Um, yeah, like these these IMs, they they are the they are the most confusing things I think I have ever purchased and or owned. Um, the bass and the mids are really well done. They're both executed very well, and to date, these are the most accurate and widest sounding KZs that I have ever heard. Uh, but it still doesn't make up for the horrible sibilance and the and the the lack of consideration for finesse and delicateness when it comes to the treble. These things are god-awful when it comes to treble response. They are so hot because of one specific peak, and I guarantee you, you will hear that peak first before you hear anything else probably, because it's so damn prevalent that you're going to either do one of two things. You're either going to A, nut because you are just a masochist and you like torture and pain and insanely high levels of trouble, or B, you will absolutely take these things out of your ear and you will either have to scrub your ears out while throwing up in a toilet or you'll just take them out and you won't listen to anything for probably like another 30 minutes because your ears are just ringing and yeah just just no just no now when you eventually eq these and you probably put on some foamies to lessen to lessen the ouch the hurt with the trouble response these are a fairly decent iem but why in the hell would KZ and Crin Endorse and IEM that has this big of an issue, I have absolutely no effing idea. And the same can be said for the tens of hundreds of reviewers that have already reviewed this freaking thing and have said that it is essentially God's gift to man. Okay? These are not good IEMs. I don't care who says it. I've seen my favorite audio reviewers comment and you know review these and they say that they're good they are good with a caveat and i think it's important to say that because if you don't then it ruins your integrity and your credibility because you need to make that explicitly clear to your audience if your audience is very trouble sensitive these are going to be their worst nightmare i guarantee you you need to put a in a, a premature kill or a premature lowering of the of the treble in your eq before you even plug these things in and start listening to them because if you don't i warned you and that's all i'm going to say the bass and the sound stage and the presentation and the build quality is literally spot on it's perfect it's the best i've ever seen from kz they are still evolving and growing as a company in that sense but with the sound quality, and you know, for the sound quality, they're still good too. But until they fix that trouble issue, I'm not happy with KZ yet. They still give you these god awful tips. Now they're getting better. I'll give them that. They're getting better, but they're still not usable for me. And neither is the cable. That cable looks like some Fisher Price crap 
that I pulled from my left butt cheek in the middle of July when I probably already had sand and a pound of seaweed in there. Okay? This... Yeah, this I am is, is just not for me. Apply EQ to it if you want, and you might get a halfway decent I am. But honestly, if you probably just purchase some Jade Audios for like 25 bucks, the gray ones, the EA ones, you're going to have a better time with them than you are for these. And hell, for that price, you can freaking pimp them out, get a new cable for them, and they will absolutely smash these to bits. And to let you know what I mean, uh, let me get them. Where are they? Right here. See these? You buy these. You buy these right here. If you want something that sounds like this, but better. And you don't have to EQ it. Guarantee you, you'll love me and you'll thank me once, once you've done that. For now, if you don't understand, then you don't understand. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to, I'm not here to hold your hand and explain it to you, but I promise you, please buy these, buy these and tell me which one is better. I think that's all I have to say at this point, because I am so emotionally charged right now that like, I, I don't think I can, I don't think I can say anything <laughs> that will make any sense, but please y'all be a little bit more cautious whenever listening to reviewers and don't take everything that they say as truth. We are still all very different and we are all subjective and you may even like this. I am, but for me, this is, this is not it. Unfortunately, this was still a, a big disappointment and it was such a big disappointment because they almost got it right. They almost got everything right. Like I said, from the presentation to the endorsement and the collaboration with Crin to the build quality and yes, almost the sound quality, but you know, yeah, so close yet so far as the old saying goes. And unfortunately, this is kind of, this is kind of exactly what I was fearing that they would become and what they would be. So yeah. With that being said, y'all, I am so sorry if you, if you listen to this for 13 minutes, but yeah, I also love you. So thank you so much for watching this video, but please like comment and subscribe. If you like this content, uh, I don't even know what the hell the rest of the outro is supposed to be. If you like, other content like video game stuff or just other audio reviews or discussions. I post all of that on this channel. So I would be more than excited and happy if you stayed for that stuff. But as always, I hope you have a good day and or night. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay hydrated, and I will catch you all in the next video. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.